The good news of Jesus Christ according to the Gospel of St. Luke in the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now large crowds were following with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you, intending to build a tower, does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build and was not able to finish. Or, what king, going out to wage war against another king, will not sit down first and consider whether he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000. If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for terms of peace. So therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Please be seated. There's a number of texts that are kind of tough ones, <laughs> and this is one of those texts. Sometimes I want to finish off the reading with a bit of a question mark. The Gospel of the Lord? <laughs> Hate? Hate your father and mother, children. Take up the cross, which means death. Give up all of our possessions. That's a lot. This should come with a warning label, this gospel, I think. Warning. Christianity. <laughs> we got to dig into it a little bit. Can't not just take it at surface value. Jesus is saying some shocking things here to get our attention, to get us to take into account the cost of discipleship. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, to the cross. His own death is eminent. He knows what the cost is. He is giving his disciples and all these large crowds who would follow him a fair warning. It's not all easy. It's not all miracles, feedings, healings, walking on water. It has to do with getting into the muckiness of humanity. Getting in there with the poor and the sick, the outcast, the marginalized. Those who are not exactly popular. Going to where we don't want to go. Doing what we don't want to do with whom we're not accustomed. Jesus is doing a bit of a discipleship gut check here. It's a serious thing. And even in our own time, we need to take account for this. At the time this gospel was written, the time of Luke, Christianity was uh, well underway, so to speak. It was becoming a bit of a thing. St. Paul had done his work, had brought it all the way into the Mediterranean world and St. Peter all the way to Rome. Christianity was known, although it was known as Maybe at best a, a sect of Judaism. And maybe at worst, this strange cult that ate body and blood. You. Jesus is speaking to that generation where parents, siblings, were turning in family members for being Christian. 
They were persecuted. They were arrested. They were tortured. Some were killed. Jesus is telling them, take stock. The cost of this will cost you everything. It took me a long time to discern. Discern being a pastor. It was pretty clear to me early on, but I spent a good, good decade or so resisting it, kind of staying away from it. And one Sunday as I was at my home church in Colorado, not the church I grew up in, but my home church at the time. I was a youth director there. and A couple of years into that, about two and a half years, I was discerning this call. I'd heard it, was resisting it, thinking now is not the right time. And then, not exactly according to my plan and worship, I just received the body and the blood. I was sitting still there and praying for clarity in life while the congregation sang, Here I am, Lord. Who shall we send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I will hold your people in my heart. And then in that prayer, I experienced God's call. It was as if God was saying, now, now, Tony, go, 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 go. I was elated at the clarity that I had yearned for for so very long. And at the same time, I was totally shocked at this little epiphany to take up that cross. So I found my way back to the pew and went through the rest of worship and interacted with people afterwards as I would as a youth director, youth, their families, the whole congregation. Then finally got to go back to my office still reeling in my mind and in my heart about what I had felt was this call to ministry and to begin finally sat down at my desk and wept. Wept for gratitude. That finally it was clear. Finally, it was time, time to go and do what I'd wrestled with for so very long. And in that, I had joy and I had peace. My weeping was for relief. And then I realized that I had to go home and tell my wife. <laughs> and I wept for a whole different reason. <laughs> Because the cost would be great. It would change my life. It would change our life. And over the years since, my spouse has been my greatest supporter. Easy? No. But it's turned out way better than I could have ever planned. This is the call to take up the cross. We call to change our lives. And it comes to us again and again and again. Maybe not in little epiphanies at the communion rail, but maybe so. I think we have the calling coming to us today as we reach out to our neighbors to engage them in fellowship and food and games and music and worship. It's a call to take up evangelism serving others with the love of God that we have experienced. The Holy Spirit continues to work on us in that and in other ways. Next Sunday, we have our fall kickoff, what we used to call Rally Sunday, changing our worship times, getting back into faith formation. There are a lot of opportunities to get involved, a lot of opportunities that the Holy Spirit will take to work on us to pull us even deeper into this discipleship in the days to come who knows you might find yourself changing up your sunday morning schedule to take part in a in a bible study or maybe in your weekly schedule you may find yourself at serving meals to 
those who are in need through facets in the weekdays, maybe spend a Saturday washing clothes for the homeless at the Lamb Center. Maybe you'll take up not just a Bible study, but leading a Bible study, engaging in youth in their ministries. All kinds of crosses for us to pick up, for us to serve, for us to live our lives for others. I think it's awesome. I think this thing, this faith, this call to discipleship, this gospel, it should come with a warning label. Beware. This could change your life. This could change everything in ways that you could not imagine and all for the better. For God, for each other, for Jesus Christ. Amen.